Hello and welcome from the World Economic Forum in Davos in Switzerland. Davos and the World Economic Forum meet is synonymous at one level with great wealth, with great power, with, with great leaders. But at the same time, there are lots of critical reports which emerge. None perhaps more critical than the report by Oxfam International, the Global Inequality Report. Joining me now to talk about this, uh, Winnie Bianima, she's the global leader of Oxfam International. Thanks very much for being with us. Um, I went through the report. Uh, a large part of it, and, and the parts on India are absolutely startling. And I'd like you to perhaps reflect a little bit on that. The wealth of the top 1% has increased by 39%, the wealth of the bottom 50% by just 3%. So when you confront statistics like this, what does it indicate? It tells us a picture of frightening, alarming, widening inequality between rich and poor globally, including India. And it's not by accident. It is governments who are fueling this kind of inequality. Mm -hmm. They are fueling it by failing to tax the rich individuals and the big companies. They're mm -hmm. not paying their fair share of taxes. Mm -hmm. We're seeing that in many decades now, mm -hmm. companies, rich individuals are paying the lowest tax rates. Mm -hmm. and, the, and that means that the public services that would lift millions out of poverty mm. are crumbling, health, education in particular. I can tell you the story of a woman called Pratima from yes. India. Yes. Pratima is a poor woman. She lost her twins at birth because the clinics had no medicines, because there were delays, doctors to see her. And that's because, and that's even when India's number of billionaires has doubled in the last 10 yes, years. But India has one of the lowest investments yeah. in public health. Yeah. I just want to look at another statistic it, and just to carry on with this conversation, the top 10% of India's population holds 77.4% of the total national wealth. The contrast is even sharper for the top 1% that holds 51.53% of the national wealth. So the, the statistics and the numbers that you've got are indicating that the poor are essentially remaining poor while the rich are getting richer. And the inequality is perhaps more stark now than it's ever been. Indeed. Actually, the report, our report shows that the poor are getting even poorer. Mm -hmm. And that's a result of the tax system that governments have chosen to mm -hmm. use. They are not taxing inheritance, mm -hmm. property, finance as much as they should. Instead, they are passing the burden of tax through consumer taxes. And consumer taxes hurt poorer people relatively mm. more, particularly poorer women mm. who spend more of their income on the basics of life, like food, mm. like health. You know, we have a statistic in that report that is showing that more than 100 million people are driven into poverty every year because of health costs. The World Bank has shown that actually Poverty, the rate of reduction of poverty has decreased. Sure. And this is because, again, I have to repeat, because governments are choosing not to tax the wealthy. Yep. Governments are choosing to underinvest in public services sure. or they are outsourcing them to companies, the private right. sector, which will not put its money behind poor people, sure. but instead will cut costs by giving lower quality mm -hmm. or not even provide sure. for now, the poor. Winnie, I wanted to also ask you about um, an essential factor in this, and it's all linked, of course. Um, the, the great gender divide, which in India exists in, at so many levels, socially, culturally, uh, economically, it's absolutely huge. Um, in 2018, the, um, it was the 100, and just reading from your report, it was the 100, India was 108th on the World Economic Forum's global gender gap, 10 notches less than in 2006. It scored third lowest on health. Its overall performance is far below the global average and behind its neighbors, China and Bangladesh. So how, how would you account for these startling statistics and the fact that there are other numbers where individuals say that, look, we are touching 8% economic growth, uh, we have spread education at so many levels, uh, we are, are redefining high tech in certain areas, women are an active part of our workforce as well, we see that. Uh, and yet you have these numbers and, and, and there's such a stark divide between what is projected and what you've come out with. You're so right. The picture is bleak because when public services are not provided publicly, 
by the government and qualitatively. Mm -hmm. We all suffer, but women and girls suffer even more. Why? Because poor women depend a lot on public services for health care for themselves, maternal health, and also to care for their families, their children, the elderly, the sick, the disabled. They do most of that work. Mm -hmm. When public health is not provided, mm -hmm. then women pull out of paid work and do more of caring. But worse still, girls, girls are pulled out of school when there isn't enough money within families to pay for education. That's why publicly provided education is so important for narrowing the gap between boys and girls. 262 million children are out of school today as the billionaires here yeah. continue to increase their wealth and are under tax. So tell me a little bit about that. Right. T tell me a little bit about that. This is Davos, Switzerland. It's one of the world's most posh ski resorts. You've got leaders from around the world. I'm not sure if the US president is coming this time around, but he's been here in the past. You've had the world's richest people over here. And then we are in this opulent surrounding and we are talking about the poorest of the poor. How is Davos really a study in contrasts between its goals for high business and reports like yours and what you're trying to do? Yeah, I came here on my economy seat number 54 to meet with these billionaires here who've jetted in on their private jets because we will not stop telling them that, first of all, the billionaire wealth that they have is not necessarily out of effort and hard work. Our reports have shown in the past that most of it, two-thirds of the billionaire wealth is got through inheritance, through monopolies, mm. through crony capitalism relationships with governments, not necessarily through hard work. Mm. But because they are not even taxed fairly, mm. their wealth is not taxed fairly, they are running away with wealth and leaving people sinking more and more in poverty and women and girls suffering more than others. Yeah. particularly girls. It breaks my heart yeah. when so, I see little girls in Uganda, where I come from, who've qualified after primary school, but are not going to see the inside of a secondary school classroom yeah. because these billionaires are not paying their taxes. If they were to pay just 0.5% more tax on their wealth, all the 262 million children would be in classrooms. I'm just going to go uh, to one statistic. It follows up from you. Now, according to the Oxfam report, the, and I quote, the world's richest man, Jeff Bezos, the owner of Amazon, saw his fortune increase by 112 billion US dollars. Just 1% of his fortune is the equivalent to the whole health budget for Ethiopia, a country of 115 million people. Yes. Uh, it couldn't be more stark than that. Yes. And he even said that he's so bored, he has nothing to spend on on Earth. He's going to spend his money traveling idly in space. Hmm. That's not acceptable. That is not avoid unavoidable. If these rich billionaires were paying their fair share of taxes on their wealth, we wouldn't be where we are today. Yeah. Do you know that today, four, four cents only of a whole dollar is coming out of property and wealth taxes. Mm -hmm. Only four cents. The top incomes of rich people were being were paying 60% taxation, 62% in 1970. Today, top income tax rates are as low as 38% and even lower in in poor countries that need this resource the most. Yeah. It's about 28%. Sure. So we see that over several decades, the rich individuals and their companies have been able to get into governments and get governments to cut their taxes to ridiculously low levels at the cost of education, of health, sure. of essential infrastructure that they need for their businesses anyway. Yeah. You can't have a strong economy unless you have well-educated, healthy people, good roads, yeah. good communications, and the rule of law. Yeah. All these cost money yeah. from taxes. Yes. They don't pay their taxes, these things crumble, and economies slow. 
Even the IMF is telling them that economies are slowing, growth is not steady because they have stashed their money in tax havens, they are dodging taxes, and they have reduced their tax rates on themselves. And so money is not being plowed in people. Yeah. I, I notice, in fact, uh, a day in the life of a refugee is one of the sessions uh, at the World Economic Forum. I, I, just one final question to you. Uh, when you, when you meet some of the most powerful people over here, mm. uh, businessmen and businesswomen who are billionaires, mm. um, I mean, uh, what do they say to you? Do they see you as being a complete uh, misfit in this sort of background and what you, what you try and stand for? Or do they accept where you're coming from and are they willing to change? Absolutely not. Actually, they have been listening and a lot of them understand that what we are saying, Oxfam is saying, is not crazy ideology, it's plain common sense. Mm. You can't let a few people get away with a lot of wealth and then leave people mm. without health, without education. Right. They understand it. Right. We are going to hear, huh. I'm sure, Klaus Schwab, he has repeated his call that globalization 4.0 yeah. has to have a different narrative, a narrative of all boats lifted up, yeah. not wealth for a few and bad health and death sure. and no education for the majority. Right. Yeah. Well, Winnie, it's been a pleasure speaking to you and, uh, and your spirit uh, to, to sort of fight it out and, and, and keep fighting the good fight and to send a message that, look, as we talk about global uh, growth in terms of economic growth, it's the, the most basic issues which are often forgotten. And that's what global inequality is all about. Thanks very much. Well, indeed. Thank you for the opportunity thank to, you. To, to speak to India. Sure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye.